In compliance with the Federal Information Act, a uh, notice this committee was submitted by fax. Clarkburg Herald Journal posted in the Golden Board of the Lobby Town Hall. Uh, we now have an indication of the Father, we come to you today, God, and we thank you for this day. But Lord, we also want to lift up our elected leaders to you, God. We pray that you will help us to make the decisions that are best for our community and best for this town. And God, we just thank you, Lord, that you have endued them with wisdom. And we just pray that God, you will continue to work through them and help us all to just love one another as Christ has loved us. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Have a
Nova says if the council member employee is entitled to change this in the contract first, that she could vote. And so, so there, there's quite a few things, this, the issues of this. As well, um, one of the things that says that, that uh, event performers is an, is an exception. The, the event performance has to uh, be approved by the state fiscal accountability board prior to doing that. So, so that can't be an exception. I mean, there's just quite a bit of things going on this. Um, one of the major things that I saw with this purchasing policy, number one, it's, it's just a policy, it's not an ordinance, but, but I want to give at least my, uh, my recommendations of why not to accept this. With, with this, you can no longer um, apply for any grants at all. It does not meet any grant conditions at all. So, so by, by approving this, it would, it would limit the town from applying for any kind of grants, federal, state, or private, because it doesn't have um, conflict of interest policy. That's all, that's all I've got to say other than that. Do you have any citations you want to share to back any of that up? I'm sorry? Do you have a site? Can you cite, can you share where you're getting this information? You've made a lot of statements. Off of my piece of paper. Okay. I have better on stuff now. I can say Citations. Well, we're voting now. The state law. So. Um, the state law says, uh, section 2.1, the state law actually does say that the state fiscal accountability will have to approve the event form. So, I mean, that's state law. If you, if you would like, you know, like actual sections and stuff, I can say that. I'm not, I'm not going to waste the public time or our time reading through the entire state laws that govern all these things or going to each individual grant application and reading their requirements as well. But that's, it is, in fact, requirements in the grant application. You keep harping on the, the policy mentioned in the agenda, but state law, state code 11-35-5320, states that a municipality shall adopt ordinances or procedures. So it's not even required that we adopt ordinances. We could adopt procedures. And if there's no distinction, you can't articulate a distinction between ordinance or procedure or policy. It's really the same thing. The state doesn't even distinguish there. I think it's semantics. Semantics is a broad word that has to do with two words meaning the same thing. So okay. ordinance is law. Right. Policy is rule. And procedure is the manner in which something's carried out. It's three completely different things. Well, it's just an example. We, According to this, this law, state code, we shall adopt ordinances or procedures. So you, you have an issue with it not saying ordinance in, which it only doesn't say that in the agenda. But it's not even required. It's just called them procedures. So they're generally called ordinances. I, I understand where you're going with this, and I completely understand that you said it yourself that law says ordinances or procedures. On the agenda, it says policy. So if it had said policy procedures, you would have been fine to. What did it say in the What did it say in the package? We, we have the, the approval from last month said a motion to approve the amendment to the purchasing policy. Then I ask if we could amend the agenda to state what it means to state so that we can have the crew and I was told no. When I know for a fact you sat here and amended agendas before and I don't understand why we couldn't make that challenge to the agenda to say what it needed to say so we could have it approved. So what we're passing here doesn't say policy, it's just at one point on an agenda said policy. It was just a typo. Mayor, may I make a comment? Yes. Uh, so after this happened, you know, I reached out and actually the, the attorney, our attorney, had reached out to me on something else. And so while I was talking to him, I asked him about the specific thing. Um, he said he wasn't sure, so he said recommend to talk to Eric Scheidel, who is the Municipal Association of South Carolina's legal counsel. Um, and he asked me, he said, what's in the packet? I said, what was in the packet was an ordinance. He said, then that is what it was they approved an ordinance at that first reading.
your other point about thank you or agree. Well, I mean, beyond that, I mean, there is no point. I mean, to do a first reading and a second reading of a policy doesn't make any sense. You would never do a first reading and a second reading of a policy. On top of that, the information in the agenda was for a first reading for an amendment to the purchasing policy. The town of Packet does not have a purchasing policy. The town of Packet has a purchasing ordinance. So a reasonable person would see that in the agenda and the fact that it's first reading and realize this is an ordinance. And the the attorney or the counsel for the Municipal Association of South Carolina agrees. And I asked him about changing the information on the agenda itself. And he said, no, you need to go ahead and do that. Go ahead and change it to ordinance in there. And this would be second reading of this ordinance. So, so it can be amended? Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be amended. It doesn't need to be. What you did at the last meeting was you had a first reading that passed on this ordinance. If you don't want it to move forward, then four need to four or more need to vote against this and have it fail. As, um, as I said before, we're allowing our administrator to argue what governs him. I asked a question. He's not arguing. I asked a question and I'm trying to get an understanding of what we're doing. I don't think he's arguing. If you'll notice on the agenda tonight, uh, 10A, consider designating the town administrator as a purchasing agent. This ordinance is more robust from our last ordinance and allows us to decide who our purchasing agent is. When and hopefully the town grows and we have staff like a financial director, we could designate him. And I believe you know that. Because it's right here on the agenda that we can designate that. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a motion to say. Any other questions? Ready to vote? All in favor? All opposed? Tie. I vote for it. Consider designating town administrator as a purchasing agent. Make a motion to accept that. Approve that. I second. Motion made and second to the town administrator as a purchasing agent. Any questions on that? All in favor? All food. Uh, also, I verified that um, 
any other type of AV equipment that we may get for the town would be compatible with these units as well. Good question. Okay. So with our payments, is there going to be something where we sign out? So like if our term is up or will we turn it back in? So you would keep them as long as you're in office. They would be yours to keep. Uh, and we would set it up in such a way either that you would come up here and, up, and we upload all the packet on there. Most likely we're going to try to set it up so that you don't even need to come in and we just send you the packet. Um, I'll probably work out with West that we can send the packet directly to you and you'll have the packet on your iPad that you can bring up here and use for meetings, you can take it home with you, um, all that kind of stuff. I'm just saying documentation when we're signing it out. We will have documentation in terms of, it will be for, you know, for you I believe it's going to be uh, for Council District 5. Okay. Um, and it will be the Council District 5's iPad. That's what I'm saying, just the tracking. We will track you down if you decide to leave off. So yeah. Get me back. Any other questions? Any motion? I motion to purchase the iPad for the county. In a second. Motion made a second to purchase the iPad for the county member. Any other questions? All in favor? All opposed? Okay. Consider the appointment of the planning commission to uh, the performance to the planning commission. <clears throat> we have one other member. We met me. My name is Bert. <clears throat> Showed interest. I know we have a vacancy. She actually lives in District 6. And she doesn't I think the vacancy is the district two. Thank you. You have a vacancy. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I think so. I think so. Well, I think so. Well, she should. Uh, her name is Bert. Bert. She should. Mm -hmm. He makes that motion that y'all would have to be uh, all in favor of it. Okay. Well, if you're going to make a motion. Please uh, say. Motion made and second to uh, appoint this person uh, to the name Burke. For name Burke to the planning committee. Anybody second? Yes. Okay. Any questions? All in favor? All in favor? Motion made and second to purchase the iPad for the county council, the council, the council, Barber County. Um, the local jurisdiction uh, hazard mitigation plan. Hazard mitigation plan. This is something that's been sent down from uh, Spartanburg County. Um, I just renewed the same information that was currently on there um, and did what we needed to do to be able to be included in this plan. If we, if the town of Packlet does not pass this plan, the town of Packlet is not eligible for FEMA reimbursement for any type of catastrophe if nothing's going to happen. Any motion? Make a motion to approve this resolution. I'll second. Motion made a second to approve the resolution. Any questions? All in favor? All in favor. Any consider accepting uh, purchase request for the F-150 2022 truck? Make a motion to Motion to table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Motion to make a second. Table it. In favor? I'm refused. Okay. Uh, consider resolution to adopt the South Carolina Supreme Court Magistrate uh, Court financial order. Make a motion to approve. Second. Motion to make a second to approve. The resolution is to the South Carolina Supreme Court and Magistrate Court final order. Okay. Any questions? I have a question. Um, can we hear can we hear the Chief's opinion on this? Because he's probably a little 
closer to the mind. Chief doesn't practice law. Are we not allowed to hear his comments on this? Okay. So he doesn't practice law. Yeah, but she okay. wants to make a comment. If you want to ask him a question, you're welcome to. I would like to hear your opinion on it, if you don't mind. If you have one. Good evening to everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, the, the comment I've had on this, and, and whatever it came up, I read through it. Um, again, as Mr. Wright has stated, I don't have a jurist doctorate, I'm not an attorney. Um, I was under the impression that council was making some committees for specific topics about the town to move forward. I thought it was going to be a public safety committee. And to me, I would love for a public safety committee to be involved in something like this more so than um, just adopting it wholesale. Um, I, I would just like some people appointed that public safety committee that perhaps the town attorney would be a good person, something of that nature to go through this and, and see every single part that fits what we want for the town, as opposed to taking the whole thing that makes sense. Have you, have you seen a, a benefit in, in taking that approach in your previous experience? I have. Has ever come up before? I have, but at the same time, this is something from the South Carolina Supreme Court, they know what means something about law as well. My, my only concern is that they're dealing with all the courts in the state of South Carolina and not specifically focusing on some of the specific issues that come to small municipalities uh, that may not specifically apply to us. But again, I'm, I'm not an expert on that. Uh, it was just under my impression I thought we would be making a public safety committee sometime soon. And this would be the kind of thing that would go to that committee and then they can make a recommendation to council. So you, you see a benefit in us forming a committee that's more specific to pack this before we, we take this kind of boilerplate. Uh, okay. Thank you. Any more questions, comments? Um, I'd like to. I'd love to take our our chief's recommendation on this. Mm -hmm. We have a motion to take to accept this, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I just want, is this something that y'all had already talked about before council? Yeah, we've never discussed this now. Okay, just... Alright. The, uh, let's... The, uh, got any other questions or any comments? This is, this is recommended by Judge and the Department. They talk with the attorney about it. It was a recommendation based on the things that, that they've, they've seen with, within the audit. You know, we're probably should have some issues with. We probably should have some more information on this thing. I mean, this just resolution here. I think we should probably have some more, you know, more information on it before we vote on it. You know, to me, yeah, that's, I mean, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Can we do that? I mean, could you? It, I mean, it's, the information is here. It's, you know, we didn't get it. I mean, I didn't get it in the that, that would be the fault of our administrator. Not mine. I think it's that we can do that. Um, my mind is, you know, I think we need to you know, have all the information from the district. Yeah. 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 I mean, the motion will make a second. Yeah, we got it. We're not going to do it. We're not going to do that. If it doesn't pass. <coughs> okay. Any other questions? Any other comments? All in favor? All opposed? Pass.
uh, and we, uh, you know, updating them and you know, getting more updated. Uh, we probably need to have, you know, uh, some members to you know, look over that. We need to have people that have time to do this and uh, uh, willing to uh, look it over. We, we're not going to do it all at one time. I can understand that. Uh, uh, we can look section by section or whatever and uh, recommend uh, changes to our ordinances. How do you want to go about doing this? Well, uh, they're set up a uh, council member committee. I think the most feasible way is to just each person put a check on a piece of paper. That was not really local, and then you can just count. Please pass that on. You can count the votes later. Oh, you have to nominate, is that what you're saying? Yeah, just three check marks on whichever three members you refer to be on the administrator by the ordinance committee. And we will tally the tally the uh, count. And we'll see this will be coming for this committee. Is everyone willing and available? Yeah, okay. I mean I think it's appropriate to find out which if you don't want to be on there. If you don't want to be on there, speak up. Me, I don't have time. Okay. Yeah, I think we Everybody else is okay with it. Is this is this standard? I mean, I don't know. What do you think, Mary? Yeah, I'm good with it. Yeah. I'm not going to put it in our hospital. I don't know. You know, we had a vote, whatever. I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, it's like, you know, if I'm married to somebody, you know, you got to you got to move. Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, I'm good with it. Yeah, I'm good with it. Yeah, I'm Motion. motion to table. 
most familiar section of the table of our mind in his question. All in favor? All in Okay. Uh, yeah. Considering accepting a bid for electrical upgrades to Town Hall in relation to the new HVAC system. Uh, when we end up putting this out for bid, we had two contractors and then a later a third contractor came in and uh, had conversations with uh, Lockhart Power and our, um, uh, with RCI, with, uh, with our code, code port down there. Uh, we looked at several different options on this. Um, and what ended up coming up was, uh, for one thing, the two contractors that ended up coming out don't have um, engineers in house, so they're not able to design them. Um, what they did suggest, they said that uh, for one thing, you're going to need, uh, in conversations with everything that's going on, you're going to end up needing a 400 amp panel to be able to accommodate the 10 ton unit that's out there. Um, that was based on conversation with Lockhart Power, with the electrical contractors that were there, uh, as well as uh, Mike Barry. What they ask is, um, until a 400 amp panel could be installed, um, the town could go ahead and move forward with um, and going ahead and, and energizing the three uh, five ton units that are out there that would handle the upstairs, the main floor, where everybody is right here. Um, and then later on, come back and have an engineer do a price estimate, or not price estimate, but engineer the entire project, um, and then have um, electricians bid out the project. The other concern that they had on there, and I've listed in your packet, is the 400 amp panel at minimum, uh, due to the supply chain issues, would take five months to be here. Uh, and in some cases, from uh, some electrical contractors, we're saying it's been over a year. Uh, to get a 400 amp panel. Um, so what they they even suggested us to ask the question, could we quote this project, could we move forward and set it up as um, just looking at these three units that are out. So they talked about the that you could go ahead and take two of the units and use the existing panel that's out there. Uh, the third unit would be wired up to a panel down in the basement um, and our Code enforcement said that was that would work and would not require drawings. That would enable us to go ahead and get uh, three of the four HVAC units working. Uh, the fourth um, we would come back to. Um, it's in the basement, so it's not a um, main regular day to day issue on there, but we would start working with uh, either an engineer or um, uh, to design the project and, and uh, for, for for the installation of a quarter and the uh, uh, hooking up to the tent tub. What I did like is that when that time comes, there's no need to disconnect anything that's previously been done. Those three units can stay exactly the way they are. It's not going to be uh, we spend dollars now, I have to rip it out and start over with another project. Uh, but the situation is, is we've got two quotes right now to reconnect the three five-ton units to be able to get us HVAC cooling for this building on the main floor. Uh, and then we can come back to the 10-ton at a, a later date. Is it possible to change out the 10-ton unit? Maybe call the contract and see if they use it somewhere else? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I could ask them about that. Mm -hmm. And then maybe just go back with separate units and for the basement. Or is the heating system down there specific to that 10 ton unit? I don't have an answer for you on that. Oh, thank you. Just for the next I'm sorry? Uh, you're talking about. Thank you, sir. Just for the one downstairs. The 10 ton unit is just for the downstairs. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was saying. I mean, is it feasible just to take out and just maybe have them? Remove the 10 ton unit that's causing all these problems and just put your 5 ton unit in there. What could be considered is the 5 ton would, is to accommodate the entire basement. Uh, it may be an opportunity I can reach out to CWG to do something lesser that would only cover the museum and not the storage area as a possibility. I mean, I'm just trying but to. I'll, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll reach out to CWG and see if 
we can switch that out and do something lesser for the next one, especially since it's um, not regularly, I guess, you traffic, yeah. But uh, we can go ahead and uh, uh, hook up those three units in the meantime, is that what you're saying too? Yes, that's what I'm saying is that uh, the bids right now are to accept one of the three groups on there. Uh, I'm recommending the lowest bidder is $2,800 for Spark Electric um, to go ahead and move forward with them. And they will go ahead and energize, hook up uh, to code those three units that are out there, the three five ton units. And so as soon as they start, um, they're estimating it'll be a day to do the project. Um, uh, Venture to think that based on all they're going to be doing is wire and conduit, so there's not a lot of ordering of stuff that's going to be involved in this. They'll also have disconnects for it. But I'm hoping. I make a motion to approve. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I second. second. Make, motion made and second to approve this. Uh, any other questions? All in favor? All opposed? Thank you. If you'd like, I can have the chief come up here and talk about um, item K. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, the three vehicles were put out in the RFP for the deadline of yesterday at 4 p.m. All that information came to me and I summarized it uh, for you in the agenda. We have four bidders. From what we have, we need lighting based here in Spark Road King Avenue. We want to spend $34,201.40 to upfit all three vehicles. Um, the other bidders were Global at $38,443.75, Campbell Brown at $34,989.33. Thank you. You sound like a mumble. I'm sorry. I am Campbell Brown. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank back up. Global came in at $38,443.75. Campbell Brown came in at $34,989.33. Unique Lighting came in at $34,201.40. And West Warning came in at $42,563.04. Um, all these companies do great work. So it's at pleasure to Did one have a, uh, a call that they, they, you might not need certain? Well, that's something I noted going itemized through each individual quote. Uh, that Campbell Brown had included what's considered call out your seat inserts. So basically, they removed the stock seat and put a plastic seat in it, which is something that's more comfortable for the prisoner and easier for the officer to train up after the fact. Um, that wasn't requested in the RFP. And I think what they did is they most likely wrote their quote uh, the way they write it for everyone. And we were asking for just the basics regarding that one. And they forgot to delete that line at all, but that would uh, change their quote. It would be something that easily deleted from the install list. Um, but I, I have no preference as far as what. What was the low bid? If we asked Campbell Brown to remove that seat from their bid, it would take their bid down to at least $33,674.73. Uh, I'm assuming there will be a drop in the labor charge at least an hour or so. Uh, so it could be $100 less than that. Uh, but that would be easily accomplished just asking that, that particular salesperson to remove that from the quote. There has been a time note. Uh, we wrote the RFP for 120 days. Most of the vendors, um, half the vendors said they couldn't meet that no matter what. Half the vendors said they would be really close on that. Campbell Brown said they felt like they could meet that, that 120 days. We came up with that as an average. Um, there were vendors saying it would take nine months. There were vendors that were saying it would take just a couple of some figure. A four month average would be okay, but it was written by that. Those, person, those parties that put in for this, um, that was included in the RFP, so they were aware that we expected to deliver within 120 days. Campbell Brown claimed that they could get it within the time frame. The others said they most likely could not. But it is not like we don't have vehicles that we can do nice work with if it takes long. Okay. I'll make a motion to uh, accept Campbell Brown's bid. Motion made to accept Campbell Brown. Any other questions? Campbell Brown's bid is now the lowest bidder. 
Well, it is. The actual bid. If you take that out, what's the actual bid? They don't bid. actually have that in there. But he's reading from the line items from their bid and, and removing said monies that would maybe bring it down to a certain point. So as of now, the actual quote is not Campbell Brown cheapest. The lowest bid is unique lining at 34,201 Everything else I said is hypothetical in case council wanted to table this issue. I, we already made a motion to approve. Can we approve that with the stipulation that those line items can be? No. May I ask a question here? Campbell Brown is, did meet the RFP as the, also meet the time they out there too. So they, they said they can meet in 120 days. So what was their total? What was their bid? Final bid, I mean, with all that. Who? Campbell Brown. Campbell Brown's official bid is $34,999.33. How long would it take you to get a reply from them removing the plastic seats? Monday. Yeah. Monday afternoon. Yeah. I'm assuming they're off tomorrow. You're okay with that? Yes, sir. It's not necessary to put it. In all honesty, I think right. it would be a hindrance for our officers in the way that it's designed. That particular side of the seat would be used for storage for the officer if we kept the stock seat in, it would cost us less money. If they put that insert seat in there, then that officer would only be able to use that for transport prisoners, so it would kind of minimize the use of that particular space. Yeah. So you're you're okay with waiting until maybe a possible next meeting to absolutely to, to agree on absolutely. And I brought that up in case council wanted to table this so we can get more information and, and readjust this to do right. that. Thing. Uh, based on Chief's recommendation, I uh, make a motion to table this okay. item. Motion made to table, uh, I'm gay. Okay. Nine second. Motion made to second, any questions? All in favor? Yeah. Discussion and planning commission. Board is on the field, but. Yeah, I asked, uh, I asked. Administrator to put this on there because uh, our ordinance, the zoning ordinance, has actually say quite a bit about planning commission's budget. At the planning commission the other night, you know, I noticed that there was quite a bit, quite a bit of things being purchased and, and money spent. And at no point in time has the council been approached for any kind of budgets or anything from the planning commission. So. Um, the, the ordinance is under finances for the zoning ordinance. It's actually chapter 19, number 6, finances. Planning Commission is authorized to spend money or commit to financial obligations only as much as been appropriate by the town council. Upon the approval of the council, staff or consultants may be employed. So we, we, we've, we've, we have a zoning administrator, but at no point in time did we, as a council, approve to hire a consultant for our planning commission. So that's uh, maybe something we should consider doing. Really. Or at least maybe having a budget of some sort, you know, to do it the right way. Um, as of now, we, we, don't, we have never talked about a budget, but yet we're spending money with the planning commission. And, and How was it happened before? I mean, you know, we had the planning commission before. I mean, the, yeah, the, uh, the, the the planning commission before usually it was our town administrator that handled uh, the appeals, or it was uh, Tony, which was also our administrator at the time. Am I right? And before we actually did that, you were actually administrator and clerk, so he would handle the essentially. So the, the town administrator would do those the planning appeals, uh, as opposed to having his own administrator. So you're saying the zone, you're calling the zoning administrator the consultant to the planning commission and he shouldn't be? Because he's not a town employee, he's actually a subcontractor that would have to be not staff, that would be a consultant. So yes, I'm calling our zoning administrator a consultant, he's not employed by the town. So we have what or you recommend? Uh, I, I recommend that we at least get some kind of idea what the planning commission may or may not intend to spend. Uh, we right now our zoning administrator we employ we we we, we accepted a contract with RCI 
And at no point in time were we ever under the impression that that would become our zoning administrator. And um, as of now, we're actually paying him by the hour to be the zoning administrator at our planning commissions and training sessions and such. But that, that we never actually agreed on. No, we didn't. Because I, I know what I, because I, fully because I wanted our police officers to do that. And I understood that RCI, the only time that we would have to pay RCI is when they actually went out. Code enforcement and, or uh, building permits. Right. The building permits should have paid for themselves, as I understood before, and the code enforcement would be by the hour. Uh, in, in my perspective of the 50, roughly 57, $5,659 that we paid for the two months period of December and January. Um, looking at the uh, code enforcement letters and, and things, it looks to me like more time has been spent, and, and this is just my opinion, I'm not really sure because I don't have a breakdown, but, but there's been a lot of time spent with planning and, and appeals, and commissions, uh, meetings, than actually code enforcement. So I, I, I think that before we continue with uh, those, we at least need to adopt some sort of budget because our ordinance is saying we should. We don't have to. Uh, Do we have a contract term? Andy, do we have that? We have a contract term. Do we have it handy that we can see? Administration and then file something. I don't have it. However, this is what Carson does for any other town that are hired for. Well, how, how do we know what it is that we're supposed to pay him? What I understood, there was X amount of dollars that we only had to pay him. If you'd like a copy of this contract, I can send you one. Okay. Why, why, why do you not have one on file? What's that? Why do you not have one on file? Uh, why do you not have the contract for the RCI? I have to look you it up. Proposed it to us. I mean, that's what I said. He was wanting to look at it. So I was like, you know, I'm not I'm going to print it off right now. I didn't find it. He was just asking for to look at it. Yeah, yeah, Andy, I mean, I don't know if it's super white, but it would have Andy, it's just if we did, it would be great. What do you, what do you, what do you want, what do you request? I'm, I'm hoping to understand better the scope, you know, uh, Councilman Wright's calling the question whether they're outside their scope. So if we had the contract, we could. I'm not questioning whether RCI is outside of this code. They are. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually questioning whether uh, we are spending money outside of our ordinance scope, whereas we, we as the town should have um, identified a budget strictly for the planning commission. Okay. And at no point in time has there been any budget or has council been asked anything about spending money for the money at any point in time. So the question is just the meetings themselves, that RCI presiding over the meetings, that the, that cost? I'm just questioning the validity of hiring a consultant without the council being asked prior. We, we basically, our administrator basically just appointed somebody into a position without approaching council without asking any questions and just appointed our RCI as our board of And as our ordinance has said, upon the approval of town council, staff or consultants may be employed. And you want to make a recommendation that we do the uh, 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 budget or our I think we should, we, should, we should be presented with a budget and a recommendation to hire somebody or continue to keep uh, RCI as our zoning administrator and, and have a cost, a long term cost analysis done on that so we know how much money we're going to spend. As of right now, it's by the hour and it really just depends on the necessity and use of that consultant. Am I correct? I'm very confused on this whole thing because uh, that's what RCI does for every other town is they do this full service operation. They come they're a part of the planning commission, they're part of the BCA, they're part of the training, it's all part of that. And then also all the, uh, the the fees that you're talking about, I mean, there's there's the the printing, I'm not the printing, but the advertising, so it's like 
50 bucks for the um, advertising for a public session or a public uh, hearing. Uh, and then there are signage that we end up reusing from time to time that he's got on there. I'm trying to understand what's the, what, there's not a lot of fees in anything. And, and that's out of code enforcement. You've got $20,000 in your budget for code enforcement on there to cover all of that, which includes in person these signs and doing ads at this time. I'm trying to understand why, what, what planning commission has to do with code enforcement. I'm trying to understand where the planning commission has a budget because they haven't voted to spend on anything. So if 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 we're paying a zoning administrator to lead up a planning commission as a consultant, is that the planning commission spending money? Or is that code enforcement spending money for the planning commission? That's part of the contract for the code enforcement, and that's that's part of the job. I don't know how to get you to understand, so I apologize. But the I ordinances don't. say the ordinances say the planning commission is authorized to spend money or commit to financial ob obligations only as budget and appropriated by the town council. Upon the approval of the town council, staff or consultants may be employed. At no point in time did you come to the council and ask if it was prudent to establish RCI as our zoning administrator. We have established that and council has not given me the approval to do so. Okay, what, what the problem actually is, you, uh, you, 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 you did, under general duty section 2-86, appoint or dismiss all their town employees and make suspending employees or providing the town employee handbook. So actually I do have the the ability to go ahead and appoint town employees. What, 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 we had, uh, what we had before, we didn't have a, 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 a code enforcement. We hired him to do all the code enforcement, and this includes uh, planning commission and all of what he, and what his, the same, his uh, contract with that, at no point in time, when, when, when our quote, when we got our quote from RCI, it indicated code enforcement and building and construction permits, and right. and we were we were told that, that, that the code enforcement would be by the hour and building and construction permits. We would we wouldn't make any money, but that would pay for itself. Right, and that was um, the time I spent. I remember the conversation because I didn't want to hire RCI. I wanted our code enforcement because our recent code enforcer left. And I wanted to just replace him. So what I'm hearing you saying and understanding is money is being spent by the planning commission by him heading the the yeah. meetings. That's where you say the money is being spent. Yeah, so that's because we're having to pay him by the hour. He's doing a job that that's is not in his contract. Well, I mean it, it, <coughs> his contract is a blanket scope of services. What I'm saying is, is that our ordinances indicate that we have to approve any staff or consultants beforehand. Even though the general duties of our administrator might say a point or such. But when anything absolutely says that it has to be approved by the council, we have to be asked if that's appropriate and then provided with a budget. So we need to know what we're getting ready to spend for a consultant to do these duties. And then we direct the administrator okay. to do that. Okay, all right. So we need a motion. My, my understanding, we need a motion to, uh, where did that affect me? I, I don't know if we need a motion. I would like some, I would like to know, you know how, how what, what, is, what is going to be the cost moving forward. So it is in a budget. Right now it's a blank <laughs> cost. Whatever it takes is what it takes. And that's it. So um, you're saying, X amount of meetings he will be presiding over at whatever he's charging per right. hour. That would be um, letting you know how much it's going to cost. Yeah, I mean, just present it with the budget. We need a budget to That's how many meetings a year are they? And, and if we're going to hire a consultant, we probably need to, um, I mean, I don't know if we need to bid that out. I mean, we already have a consultant, but, but what, what is necessary? Is there a determination on how many meetings no, a year? It's, it's just whatever is. Uh, Whatever. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no further meetings planned. Yeah, yeah. So if that is created, that will cover what you're asking or no? Yeah, I mean, it's a simple budget, so we know. And then, you know, like if, if, if 
we're going to the budget in this manner, then we need to do we need to approve the budget for the planning commission and we need to approve whether or not we're going to keep Mr. Marcy out of the Yes, I just want these. Mr. Kay, can you give us a budget on that? I mean, uh, to get with uh, RCI and um, come up with a budget and uh, let me make a request or just a comment. Um, we're about to go into budget season starting next month. Could we just include that as part of the budget season for 23 24? Couple of months, two, three months, or June, July. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, in your budget, you've got $500 or something. Or what? Or yeah. something. You've got yeah. $500 in your budget right now. So. We have $500 left, or is that just $500? That was the $500. There's a little bit out of it, but that was the, the budget for now. Okay. Is that the budget for next month? That's your okay. Uh, I just put it as part of the when we when we we don't do work sessions. I can just include and, and put a line, or put a section on there for planning commission budget, uh, BZA budget as part of the total budget for the, for the entire town. And so I think that would work for you all. And we can discuss that in during those times. Well, I think we also should have the opportunity if we want to keep the person we have now, or like you say put the job out there and let someone else, you know, I don't know if bid is the right word for it, apply, I guess, because the opportunity has not been out there for them to do so. I mean, I think, I don't have a problem with what you're just saying, that we need to at least establish by council that we approve of the zoning administrator role being a consultant. Or why can't it be you know, why can't you be an employee or something like that? Well, okay. Administrator Jessica, can we do this at the budget? Uh, can we do all that? Or do we need to do it right away? What do you think? So we're just going to continue, you know, we're just going to continue to pay for RCI as the zoning administrator? Well, there's, there's no future meetings planned. So, so um, so there may not be any cost before we hit the first. There you go. Uh, as of right now, um, the meetings last less than an hour. So you're talking about $25 on there? It's a two hour minimum. Okay. Um, and then you've also got, so two hours, $50. I mean, to be able to contract out someone to come out for 50 bucks for once a month. These men have not met in the last two months, I believe. And as long as there's not any appeals, they will not be. Um, the only other time that, we, that the planning commission will most likely have anything longer than an hour on there will be for once we start going through the process of the uh, comprehensive plan and the master plan. Well, a lot of the not going to have any more meetings uh, for, you know, I think, you know, we can go ahead and, you know, my opinion is to go ahead and keep it like it is uh, and, and, and uh, all. then in our budget, you know, either provide, either separate it out uh, or the, uh, um, the RCI, they'll be a consultant. And, you know, I'm sorry. No, the only other thing I was going to say is keep in mind that the, the, the other contractor we considered was CCI, uh, and RCI was half the cost. So it was $25 an hour versus $50 an hour, which is part of the reason that we remember going with RCI. All right. Okay. So, what do y'all think? I mean, you know, uh, I think, you know, we'll be okay to do it for two more months and then Just have, a, have a, huh? Put us put in the budget. Yeah, put it all in the budget and we need to divide it out and, and, and then let them as their. So there'll, there'll, be no, there'll be no work from the consultant until next year, next right. year's fiscal budget anyway, right? Right. So, so there'll just be no work from RCI on the planning commission. 
Right. Okay, build so code enforcement and uh, building the right. permits. And that would be it. That'd be the only charges that we get, so it's not a big deal. But I, I could be wrong, but I believe the mayor was talking about having them continue as they are having been doing through the end of this fiscal year. And then during that time, you would go through the budget and do something right. new from July moving forward. That's what we're talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't think it's appropriate to just blank check whatever we're going to do. No. I, mean, I, mean, I, I think it's appropriate that we understand that there will be no extra work other than code enforcement and building permits. And then it doesn't have to be changed. We just understand that we're spinning. We're doing something that wasn't primary. We, we, don't, have, we don't have any. Uh, There's nothing. Any provision. That's not to say there could be a meeting could come up. I'm just saying there are none planned. But if we're talking fifty bucks a meeting, and we have two months, five hundred, you got you got you got to give them uh, you got to give notice of it anyway. So so yeah. so let me just ask, what does he do at the meeting? But what does he do at the meetings, at the planning commission meetings? What, what is his role? What does he do? They have to have somebody there to kind of instruct them as to what, why they're there. Zoning, you know, what the zoning laws are, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But when I, when I was at the planning meeting the other day, uh, we don't actually have a fee schedule for any, any applicants, applications or anything of that sort. We don't have a fee schedule, so so regardless, there's no way to recoup the money if if we if there an application was filed for something and there's no fee schedule for that. So the town pays for for what would you mean fee schedule? I haven't seen a fee schedule. So if you if, if somebody was to put an application for rezoning, are you talking about planning and stuff? Yeah, I haven't seen a fee schedule. So if you want to fill out an application, have something rezoned, there's no fee involved. There should be a fee on every single town that I've looked at has a fee for, for, for those. I know you have to have a fee for the appeals board. Right. Yeah, I'm just saying, so like, so, so like the signs and posting the signs and then, and then you know, doing, doing all the work and the public hearings, does that cost money every time you do one of those? Why, the, the town, when, when somebody asks to have something done, the town should not pay. That should be the individual that, that's requesting the changes. You know, in, in other municipalities, they all have fee schedules for, for, for these applications. When we talked about it at that meeting, uh, I remember Michael telling you that there, there was a cost when there was an applicant on there. Uh, we had several of those that came from the town, so they didn't have those. But the ones that were applicants, a fiscal applicant, there was a cost on there. Uh, I have to get them in terms of what that cost is. Yeah, I, I just asked him what, what the fee schedule was, and he had no fee schedule to give so I. Until I have one to say yes, we have a fee schedule. Right now I there is no fee schedule in our ordinances. I, I can get that. I can have them take care of that. Okay. Okay. Are we good? Then? I don't think we need to make a motion or anything. I think it's pretty much understood. Okay. There will be there'll, there will be one more plan. Okay. For the zoning administrator, there'll just be code enforcement and. Building permits moving forward. So they doesn't want to see it. So we decide. Right. So okay. you're, you're saying the planning commission and the BCA will not meet any more in the rest of this fiscal year? He's, he's saying there's not any planning right now. Not any planning right now. There's, there's nothing planned as of right now. So there's one so many on months. June and July, but there's April, there's, there's not many Well, you yeah. know. You, you know, how many, uh, you gotta, if you don't have a, a meeting, uh, you gotta have a reason for the meeting. And if you don't have a reason, you have to have a time limit, you know, for the other people you're talking, you know, how, how many uh, weeks and all before. Yeah, practically speaking. Yeah. Not technically, but practically, it'd be difficult to get it in. Right. I mean, there's still a lot to get in anyway. There's still a possibility of being two more meetings. In the rest of the year. I would like to be provided with a possible budget for the zoning commission, for the planning commission, and whatever, whatever money that possibly is going to be spent with the planning commission, I'd like to see a budget that I can approve. And I would also like to at least approve the zoning administrator, the consultant, if that's what we're going to do. Okay. Anybody up for any questions? 
Right. Consider the first reading uh, to approve tax amendment following the rules three uh, six uh, D uh, one. Uh, as you can see, Michael Berry is not here tonight, so unfortunately you have to look at me when we go through this. Um, this was done uh, this past Monday uh, to remove a section of the text as it relates to 3.6.361 uh, uh, and to remove a section for residential zoning district. Uh, if you have any questions, I can give you more information on this. Um, but this, is, this comes as a unanimous vote from the Planning Commission. I have a couple questions. Sure. So, um, at the meeting, I asked for the application for these text amendments, and um, and I also asked how these text amendments were put together for the planning commission. And uh, Mr. Barry, the uh, zoning administrator, told me that staff uh, staff came up with these changes mm -hmm. and uh, staff put together the text amendment and brought it to the, the planning commission so um, watching the planning commission and seeing how it all worked out the planning commission let me just read what the ordinance is say first so everybody can get a complete understanding of what their role and duty is in the zone Application forms for amendment requests shall be obtained from the zoning administrator. Completed forms, together with an application fee in accordance with a fee schedule established by the town council, to cover administrative costs, plus any additional information the applicant believes to be pertinent, will be filed with the zoning administrator. Any communication purporting to be an application for an amendment shall be regarded as mere notice until it is made and the form required. Application form amendments must be submitted in form, proper form, at least 25 days prior to a planning commission meeting in order to be heard in meeting. All papers and other data submitted by the applicant, by the applicant on behalf of the amendment request shall be transmitted to the planning commission. The planning commission at its regular meeting shall review the application, take comment from any interested party, and prepare a report including its recommendation for transmission to the council. Um, Mr. Barry told me that the staff of the town came up with these text amendments. The ordinance to say that the planning commission needs to needs to do this. So, so the, the staff, I, I'm not sure what that means. And, and on the applicant, it says town of Packet. Town of Packet would be this council. Can you elaborate on how this all worked out? Uh, this was something Mr. Barry had put on there. I agreed with him, and uh, it was submitted to a group of um, volunteer citizens who unanimously agreed. Did they file an application? Um, I, I, I would have. I have not seen it myself. I can't say that they, they absolutely did, but yes. Mr. Barry said that there was no application. Mr. Barry told me that in fact there was no application. Any communication purporting to be an application for an amendment shall be regarded as mere notice until it is made and informed required. So the planning commission went through this whole process to um, to do the, to do this, and uh, but there was no application. I, I, I can't confirm nor deny. I haven't talked to uh, Mr. Barry about that. Mr. Barry assured me that there was no application. I, I asked him for a letter to explain on how all of these amendments came about. Mm -hmm. But my concern is, is that, that uh, in doing this, I, I asked the Planning Commission had they reviewed the comprehensive plan, and they said, in fact, they had not. So my, my concern is that we're leaving the door open for litigation. <clears throat> If, if, if anybody had an issue with this, 
We're leaving the door open because we didn't follow our, our own zoning orders in, in, in the manner in which we did this. That's your interpretation. You're correct. It's, it's, I read exactly what our planning ordinances say. It's, there must be an application filed. You're asking that the planning commission itself file its own applications? The planning commission doesn't have to file an application. So who does? The proposed amendment to the zoning ordinance may be initiated to, by the town council, the planning commission, or by application filed with the zoning administrator. It's three ways. The town council, the planning commission, or the zoning administrator via an application. None of those three things happen. Via an application. Yeah, application filed with the zoning administrator by the owners of the property proposed to be tamed. What property is it? It's, not it's, it's, a, it's a large uh, it zone within our it community. It doesn't, it doesn't pertain to an individual. This is, applies to the whole town, well, this district. So I don't know how an individual, it's not an individual's property. If it was a variance, I would, I would probably agree with you. But it's not. I think a variance probably would have worked a lot better. You know, I could just file an application for a variance, you know, on, on a specific property. Whereas with no application and the, the staff, who, I don't know who staff is. Who is he told me staff, who's staff? I mean, it would be both myself and the um, Michael Berry went through this. Right, and, and a council member, a council member actually called me and told me that that, that they had worked with Mr. Berry on this situation. So, so my my impression is that the staff would include the council person as well. Um, Let me clarify that because I I had called you, um, telling you what I had discovered in our ordinances. And how Michael Berry had had consulted me, basically saying, "This is what needs to be done," and I basically said, "Someone should do that. That's a great idea." We didn't go over any text or whatever. I don't. I, this was last year. So I, don't, I don't remember the, the wording I used. I did call you and, and asked you, "What do you think, Council?" would feel about this, and you said, you assured me, this is a great idea, I can't imagine anyone would have a problem with this, it should move forward with no issue. That's the specific reason I called you, just to get I, your idea. I didn't on point it. your name out individually, you did, and I ask that you don't talk directly at me with what your recollection of the conversation is, because I don't feel like it sense. You're close, but not on the I'm not willing to support this. My issue is, is it sounds to me <coughs> this is a conflict of interest, a huge conflict of interest. How's that? Um, it, just from what he just said, it sounds like that our our council person worked with our zoning administrator to get some zoning text change amendments done. Sounds no like application was ever filed. Um, no, nothing, nothing was ever done in the proper manner. That's not the case. Yeah. That is the case. No it's application is ever filed. The, the part about how the a council member worked with uh, someone to I'm not willing to argue or something. I, I'm telling you my opinion of the circumstance that I am looking at. Correct. That I'm not willing to argue. It's your opinion. Okay. So what I'm saying is, I don't think that this is legal. It's not been done in the proper fashion, and I can't imagine voting. It's unfortunate that Michael Berry can't be here because he's the expert on this. What happened last year was I asked his opinion on um, what I was trying to do, and he said, here's the problems. I could bring this to, I, I could talk to the planning commission about this, see what they want to do. Okay, that's it. We didn't have a plan. Let me, let me stop everybody right here. What we need to do, Michael's not here, we can just, you know, we just talk, talk it over and over and over. We don't know. We need to, uh, I need to have a table motion for all these uh, 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 considerations here, uh, the text amendments and all. 
Because it's only an ordinance, I need a uh, table motion that we can talk to Michael about this. So I want to clarify something too so that everybody understands. I've heard a couple times that, that it's $25 an hour for RCI. It's actually $50 an hour with two hours an hour. Not $25. That's what's going to be correct. Is it just now? But it's, but it's still twenty five dollars an hour with a two hour minimum. So we work three hours. It's still seventy five dollars. It wouldn't all of a sudden become one hundred and fifty. That's correct. I'll make a motion to table these until Michael Berry is available. If we can. This is time. item uh, uh, L through Q. That's correct. It's L3. I believe. Okay. Unless you want it. All right. Motion to table those until we hear from Michael Berry and get the Okay. All right. Need a second. Table those. Motion made to take the table with uh, items L through Q. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. All in favor. Okay. Comments from you? Yes. Um, the Packwood Community Cleanup will be held Saturday, April 15th, 10 a.m. to noon. This is a partnership with T1 Sparks of Beautiful. Uh, the pro uh, they provide everything for the pickup. IJ is sponsoring the event by providing lunch for all volunteers. Uh, as of today, we have 18 uh, who are uh, signed up. Uh, I would encourage y'all to try to encourage other people to come out. The event will start with the Packard Fire Department. Volunteers are needed for both pickup uh, of garbage and serving lunch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hood, for volunteering to, to help us take care of lunch. Uh, volunteers must sign up and keep one spark for a beautiful website. Uh, the work on the exterior of Town Hall has been stalled due to a lack of brackets to hang the gutters. Uh, received a phone call this week the brackets arrived and the gutters should be installed in the by the end of next week. Uh, I asked Madco, who is currently working on Town Hall, to provide an estimate for work at Maysville Schoolhouse. Um, this would be for uh, the cost of wood replacement, painting, window repair, uh, and replacement. The estimated cost is $55,000. Granted, this is just an estimate that has not gone through a formal bid. So what I wanted the council to kind of get an idea of what the cost would be on this. And if the council wanted to, I could try to put together a RFP. Or if you'd like, we can, uh, I can look for additional grants that are out there first uh, before trying to go in that process. I would like you to pursue some grants. Uh, I'll skip down to uh, as mentioned before, please send me a list of locations where you'd like to see new street lights. I uh, wanted to let you all know if you get a chance to head out to Sunset and Hillbrook, the light that y'all approved in the last meeting has been installed. Uh, let me know if y'all approve the amount of candlelight that's out there as well. Um, the new website is live and getting a lot of positive feedback. It's a great tool to send uh, comments, complaints, other information to town. Uh, it also has a wealth of uh, information to the public, um, user friendly, easy to navigate. I want to make sure that council and the community understand uh, how much we truly appreciate the work of Tricia Wright, who provided this in kind um, service to the town uh, for the for the community for this project. I thought you were flat. Uh, uh, one thing that did come up at one of the last meetings, uh, Mr. Wright had mentioned uh, possibly dropping uh, TextMyGov, and based on how Ed, the community is using this, um, and I had a conversation with, with Ms. Wright, um, I would like to us, for us to consider dropping TextMyGov. Um, we will take the numbers off of it, take all the comments off of it, save it, and then stop that. Uh, at least for now, because I mean the website's working great. It goes directly to our um, our emails. Um, so if y'all are okay with me dropping that at least for now, temporarily until I don't see a reason to come back to it. And we're looking at some other opportunities, some other locations to, to do to get information out to the public as well. Um, 
With council permission, I'd like to get pricing on the cost to evaluate the town's stormwater system. Um, I want to want the pricing to be able to apply for. So what I'm looking for is the, the cost to do a complete evaluation of the stormwater system and the, the, that cost for that I'll use to apply for grants. I wouldn't be looking for money from the town at all. What I'm asking is if the council's okay if I talk to uh, Rich Anderson, um, which is the engineer we had through for a three-year contract, uh, and get him to give us an estimate of the cost of evaluating the whole thing, and then I'll work on infrastructure grants to try to get some money to, to cover that, if y'all are okay with that. Once, if we end up getting that grant, if we end up moving forward with all that, we create a priority list and project assessment, and then we start applying for grants to start tackling some stuff. We're getting a lot of complaints about stormwater issues, especially in the old Mill Village area, where the 100-year-old stormwater system is starting to collapse and need repairs. Yeah, a lot of the sidewalks as well. Because most of the stormwater is underneath the sidewalks. So I'll go ahead and move forward with this if you're okay. Please do. Mm -hmm. Um, number nine, uh, you're very aware of the complaints of garage, uh, garbage pickup. Uh, if council wants, I can add a discussion on the next agenda. Um, that's up to y'all. The other thing is, uh, Mr. Burrell, uh, Travis had asked for um, an update to the uh, policy for trash pickup. Uh, as of right now, trash has to be out by 6 a.m. He's requesting that we, that it has to be out the night before. The reason being is sometimes he's got appointments to go to in the afternoon and wants to be able to start earlier if possible if he wanted to start at four or five o'clock. Um, if y'all are okay with moving that so that they have to be, it's got to be out the night before. Do we not already have that in one of the, in that, in that panel that we placed on top of the trash can? Did yeah. they put it out the night before? It says either or, like, um, you know, the night before, but not the three kids stay out there all the time. You know, right, and then be picked up within a couple of days. Well, yeah, I, I think it's necessary to say, you know, I don't know if we just kind of move around to you, right? Polish yeah. the <laughs> that, that says that it has to be out before, you know, I mean, I think, I think just notify the public that they would like to start picking up the trash earlier because it's hot during the day. You know, it's got to be trash down there earlier, you know, something of that sort. One other thing I wanted you to know, uh, after conversations um, with Ms. Burrell, um, bamboo is not collected as part of the lead pickup. Uh, it causes some uh, issues to the chipper. It won't shred. It won't shred. Uh, and so I've added that to the website on there, just letting y'all know. If anybody calls and is complaining about we're not picking up their bamboo, it will potentially destroy our machine and cause some safety issues. Uh, number... Twelve. Uh, we had a Packlet River Festival uh, committee had met together. Some of the changes that we are looking at, and I wanted to kind of get an idea if y'all are absolutely against this or uh, would consider this, is suggest changing the times. Uh, last year it was 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. and looking at changing it from 1 p.m. to 10 p.m. We could still have the children's choirs, uh, but it just ended up being a very, very long day. And you had a lot of people who came in the morning, stayed for a little while, left. Uh, some didn't come back, some did, it's different groups that, um, in my experience, having an all-day festival is just really trying. And on top of that, we did not have enough volunteers to be able to put this on. So I'm recommending that we change it over to 1 to 10. Uh, another suggestion in there um, with the circle. Um, this is the first year the town has had to deal with the circle. In the past, they were in the process of building the circle, so that wasn't that big of an issue. Uh, and so where trucks or vehicles are coming through from Gaffney, they end up having to go into the left-hand lane uh, to go back out, and it created some issues there. Uh, after having some conversation with our new chief, um, I think we could close off Sunny Acres from the traffic circle all the way up to Victor Park, uh, and that's where all of our, our vendors and stuff would be, and people can still use the traffic circle down the memory, uh, into the circle and then out 150 limestone in the same way limestone back up the other direction. Those are big changes and I wanted to make sure that y'all were okay with that or absolutely against them. I think it makes more sense. You okay with that? There's a huge open space where the vendors can be pretty much anywhere. I will have you a proposed traffic routing yeah, that you can see my yeah. visualizer. I mean, just There's closing down from the top of the hill down to the circle. There's, there's plenty of room. All we're doing is cutting out the circle, the museum. Big deal. 
Are you all also okay with the changing of the time? I think it's been planned together. It will still be playing very well. I think it will do an excellent event. Uh, and also keep having to have volunteers come in at 5 o'clock in the morning. Um, it will go a little bit later, but I think the crowds were wanting it to go a little bit later. And then, just so y'all know, the schedule that was put in place for this past year was set before I had gotten here. Um, so it'll be, each band will play for an hour and a half to two hours instead of just the one hour or the 45 minutes that we've done in the past. The schedule will be much better this time. Um, other stuff y'all can just review in terms of the market and the, um, I don't have anything yet on the market on here. The history committee met. Uh, they have another meeting that's coming up. Um, the only thing, I, I added something in here I just wanted y'all to be aware of. So um, at the, remember this was done back in since October, y'all passed three accounts for the local government investment pool to start an account with them. As of uh, today, uh, the account has uh, made $19,401.90. Uh, free and clear does not cost taxpayers anything. It was based off of a 4.6% interest interest rate on that. So that will continue to gain revenue for the town. That's all I have. Thank you. Do you have any idea of when um, our budget workshops are going to be in? Uh, I do not. If you know, if you could let me know if you uh, I think you prefer probably on weekends. I just like schedules so we know. I mean, the budget needs to be approved by the June meeting, so April, May, June, we need to have one before the next meeting and one before the June meeting. So Absolutely. Uh, this month, preferably, workshop to go over the budget, proposed ideas, things of that sort. That works. So we can approve it at the May meeting and then the second at the June meeting instead of having five meetings in June. Before we're going to be done by July. We can have it too. I have no idea. I'll go ahead and put uh, the draft together, and I'll also go ahead and uh, uh, put together a schedule of some uh, work session possible dates. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Last month, the month of March, 51 calls for service, seven reports. Uh, a couple of things I want you to be aware of in case constituents uh, bring that up to you. Um, a couple of malicious damage incidents at the river landing that Lockhart was the victim of. Uh, they expressed to me that in the past they had gotten pushback from judges because of the verbiage on the actual signage to charge people with damaging the signs to get out or ban uh, damaging the gate to get out. So we're having a conversation now about if that needs to be changed. They'll obviously take care of that. Um, a couple of reported incidents of items being stolen from unlocked vehicles in fact in those areas video footage. Um, it's pretty poor quality, and I do believe that the people responsible are Jew House. I'm a little hesitant to put that on social media to try to identify those people, but we still are working to be a part of it, uh, making an effort to try to identify those folks. Uh, did a lot of training over the last month, and now that the staff is increasing, uh, we're, we're having to basically do training every week on some topic to keep every officer uh, operational. Uh, I've had multiple citizens approach me face to face with complaints about speed. Um, so, Officer Wilton and I will absolutely take care of that very soon, in the next few days, over the course of the next few weeks. Some very aggressive focused enforcement uh, for that. Um, let's move down to number eight. I submitted several grant requests over the past month to include for body armor, traffic cones, traffic barricades. Uh, computer systems, computer software, support items, and the award dates for these grants range from two months from now to six months from now, and I will update you as those come in. Uh, I am anticipating, cannot promise you, but I am anticipating being funded or finding comes barricades and things for traffic and pedestrian control for the River Fest prior to River Fest. So any of the past discussions that we've had about that, trying to locate for that other places, I'd like you to kind of pause on that and let me kind of dig into it a little bit and see if I can make it happen without spending any funds or, or using any favors. Uh, and Mr. K, I mentioned that Riverfest planning is underway. I will make sure that you have an updated map ASAP in regards to what I anticipate for the traffic flow. Uh, the way things will go, I think it will be really pleased with it. I think I'll make the event flow better, make it like happier, and, and it'll be safer as well. Would, would the surplus, the state surplus, have barricades and stuff? Okay. That is something that most places hang on to until they just crumble to the point they throw on the dumpster. Yeah, 
they, they really get worn out pretty quickly because they fall over people in their room. Um, I, I had uh, 20 barricades from 1033 program in Richmond, and the next day they called back and said, you know what, these are in such great condition, we're going to keep them. <laughs> so I was already trying to line up a truck and get to Richmond and pick them up and take them care of the whole traffic circle and a lot of other things. And next time, call me on <laughs> <laughs> That's just, just the way, just my luck letting me do things like that. But I, I think we're going to have a good festival and, and let me take care of those things for a couple months before we're about to Any questions I can answer for anybody? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, in regards to our executive session, um, Running from last month until now, uh, being approached by individuals who heard things who were really would not have known those things had it not come from our executive session. So I wanted to say tonight that according to Robert's rules of order, newly revised 12th edition 9.24. A meeting or a portion of meeting at which confidential business is discussed is called an executive session. Another word for confidentiality is secrecy. The proceedings in which an executive session are supposed to be secret. The general rule says Robert's Rules 9.26 is that anything that occurs in executive session may not be divulged to non-members. Holding a closed meeting is viewed as good governance practice in a limited number of situations involving business that is discussed <coughs> in private. Members participating in a closed meeting are expected to keep the proceedings confidential. And not keeping these meetings confidential, it represents a significant breakdown in trust between council members. And this is true. Robert's Rules also uh, is clear that a member who violates confidentiality by revealing what happened during an executive session can be disciplined. And I also just want to point out here that we should not have to, but we did just last month sign the civility and respect and solutions. And then we all just signed that here tonight. But this should not make us have to be what we should be. We should already have this and follow Robert's rules. And in doing so in a while, I learned because information was told outside our executive session, I want to say. It mattered not at the blatant arrogance at which the information was repeated to certain individuals and to the public on social media platform. And it mattered not that the council members betrayed the trust of the executive session and other council members. It also mattered not to the council members' oath of office that was taken. And lastly, to the people of Packlet at Metternot, who expect and deserve a standard of personal integrity. Integrity, which is defined as a means. The quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness. The quality of behaving according to the rules and standards of your job or profession. A person with integrity behaves ethically and does the right thing, even behind the floor's doors. Send me an email or something, but I'd like some kind of update as far as the case. 
restitution or anything as far as like all the damage that was done to that the clock and the windows. We've heard nothing. I'd like to know if they're going to be fixed or we you know, you know, charges, charges. The office has been in touch and they had asked for uh, reaffirming the numbers that we got quoted. Yeah. I'm sure that they were accurate and we gave them that information. We haven't heard anything about it. Okay. Now, that's not been that long ago. Do we have that? Do you have that number? I, I, don't, I don't remember ever receiving the insurance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I just, want, I just wanted to know, like, I want to put up on the record the amount of money that, that the damages to that building that these children and some adults actually did in that building. Um, you don't have to say it right now. I just, I just want, I want, I want the update so that we, we know that we're doing something about that. You know, I mean, well, I think we shall, should we all receive that? Yeah, that's fine. I just, I, I'm asking for it. If we, if, you know, it, it, it sent it to everybody, that'd be fine. I just, I didn't, I haven't heard anything about it. And I, I just want to know. It was just done. Okay, all right. So we've been waiting on it. Okay. Good. Nothing. <clears throat> Weird. Uh, no. Okay. I have nothing right now. Uh, I'd like to wish everybody uh, uh, a lot. The quote was $3,672.07. That's from Kaposky Glass. That includes tax. Just, 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 just to fix the window panes? Yeah. Wait. I thought it was going to be saved way more than that. I thought it was going to be $10,000. Well, it was for the we were replacing each one of those little panes that are in there. That's what the price they gave me for all all the broken uh, panes that are out there. Because they were that's really astronomically cheap. I cannot imagine. What what type of glass are they using? Single panes. It's, 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 it's single. It's all single. All those were put on in and they were all single. That's cheap. I figured it'd be a lot more than that. Um, is that something that we can go ahead and fix? So the you know, can we can we go ahead and fix that and then regardless I mean what we're what we're looking at right now is that to make sure if insurance will cover the cost on there we do the deductible which I believe is five hundred dollars and then we can go ahead and pay the five hundred dollar deductible on there and then uh, Mr. I can say his name I guess because I mean it's he's been adjudicated Mr. Vaughn has um, it will be end up covering the cost of that five hundred dollars which will be the power cost into it. I, mean, I think this is something that we should pursue. You know, I mean, it's, you know, would you like to, you know, amend the agenda to cover this? I mean, if, if we if we've got costs, do we need to put this out for quote or bid? I mean, this is. I don't think we would turn it into the agent the agent would do would do that. I mean, we wouldn't have. Would the insurance company contact the policy and have it done? We, we contact them because we like. Right. Should we need to put this out for bid? We could put it out to bid. I'm trying to figure out exactly how this works. They end up paying for it, and we end up covering only five hundred dollars of it. But um, so if the cost to us is only five hundred dollars, we don't have to do that. Uh, I think that's something we need. I'll keep you updated. We need to do. I mean, it's it's something to be totally. We need to have a vote on it now because we just yeah. took our administrators right to do this. I didn't I make a motion. Sorry. We suspended his purchasing, so we need to oh, actually. Other than the council approves. Right, we have to approve that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, just for, we don't have to vote on that. We, we need, no, we don't have to vote on that. We need to vote on if we get the amendment agenda, and then we have a motion to go right. away. Okay. I make a motion we amend the agenda to yeah. that item. I second. Motion made and second to amend the agenda to uh, um, include the. I, I think we need to make sure that we, we, we state that we're amending the agenda based on some circumstances that need to be repaired based, you know, because of right. the condition of the building. It's only worsening. So this is an extreme condition. I, I don't want to just amend agendas because we want to talk about something else. This is something necessary that yeah. should happen to the fact. I mean, it's only getting worse on the inside of the I'm sorry. It's an emergency. I mean, yeah, I mean, essentially, it, it, it should have been done a long time ago. I'm sorry the insurance company or whoever took so long, but we need to get that done. Okay, we may take the amendment to include that. To read, to read what? $500 to replace the windows, pay the deductible to the insurance company, replace all the panes and windows that busted out. It's, 
bringing inside the building over there. Okay. To amend the agenda. Okay, uh, anybody have any other questions? All in favor? All in favor. Now I need a motion to. I need a motion to approve the $500. To replace it. To, to, to allow it. Yeah, to allow him to. Is he, is he going to be quote? Is that what it is? Or? Well, because the insurance company is just a deductible, I, I would work with the insurance company to get that fixed. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I second. Oh, you made a mistake. To approve getting the, using $500 and getting the windows fixed in the fall um, right. Any other questions? All in favor? All in favor. Okay. All right, the only thing I have, I'm sorry. I have a question because I want to understand the, the spending of additional dollars. Can I still write checks for uh, stuff that we've already I mean, approved? Approved. Okay. Okay. Yes. And that would be the HBA? I mean, it's the electrical contract that we approved tonight for $2,800. Well, I mean, like, can I still sign the employee con uh, checks? Can I still do utility checks? Yeah. I, mean, you know, I think I think it says that there has to be two, two signs, two, two names on a check. I, and I don't know if you. That's that's appropriate. appropriate. Yeah. If if you wanted the mayor to sign instead of instead of that, that's what I'm trying to say. No, no. Okay. Okay. Everybody cool? All right. And, uh, Make a motion for. Did you have more to say? Yeah. You've been trying. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like to wish everyone a uh, happy Easter and uh, a nice uh, 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 good Friday and. Uh, and we will be meeting uh, uh, special meeting uh, will be the 13th at 7 o'clock here and, and, uh, and discuss the so we'll, we'll put that out uh, unless y'all know that we'll be meeting here at 7 o'clock on the 13th is it possible to Mr. Lyle maybe have him in sure yeah. maybe just ask him to see if it's feasible if it's 9 o'clock at night you know Maybe out of the well, we're going to be at seven, so yeah, we're going to be at seven. It's a little heavy at first, but whatever. We're not working on it. Yeah. April, yeah. April 13th, so there's from today. Uh, it's seven o'clock, and um, I guess you'll let me know what's going to be on the agenda. Yeah, but I'll ask if you can come. All right, that's all I have. Thanks, everybody. Well, we just had a motion. Did somebody second the term? I didn't, I didn't fulfill my motion. I make a motion for the My motion made. Second. All in favor? Mr. Can I have a party? Mr. President?